Hi, this is Greg Benz with a quick video primer on how to create your own luminosity masks in Photoshop. Uh, without getting into all the details of luminosity masks, they're a very powerful way to edit images using the brightness values in the image itself, which is a great way of essentially telling Photoshop specifically where you want to edit in the image and get a precise selection that looks natural. And we're going to, in the next video, show how we go from this basic raw image here to this edited image here using luminosity masks. But I first want to start by showing you how we create the masks in a manual process, how we automate that, and then just a quick example of how we apply them. So first, uh, when working with luminosity masks, uh, if you're working manually, you're going to have to go into the channels panel, and the easiest way to do that is probably to put that separate from your layers because you're going to need both. So we're just going to separate that. And within luminosity masks, there are three basic selections. There are highlights, there are shadows, and there are midtones. Uh, and so we will start by creating our light masks, our highlights masks. And to do that, we simply command click on the RGB thumbnail, which has selected them. You can see by the marching ants that we have a selection and we're simply gonna save that. And we'll just call it our lights one. And you can see from this selection here that the brightest areas are most selected because white reveals and black conceals. So the shadows here are not selected. So if we made an adjustment based on this mask, we'd be preferentially adjusting the highlights. That'd be a great way of perhaps going in and changing the saturation here or bringing down the brightness here. But uh, this is a pretty blunt mask. It's really selecting most of the image. We want to be more selective to just the highlights here and so we're going to intersect the mask or multiply it with itself we do that by selecting the mask and hitting shift option command and click if you're on a pc when i say option or command know that that means alt or control so shift option command and click will intersect or multiply those masks which means that the brightest areas stay bright and the middle areas start to get much darker and the darkest areas really get black and we're going to save this as our lights to mask and we can already see here in this image that it's more selective to the highlights and will intersect itself again again this is going to give us the next layer the lights three and you get the general idea here that this is just getting much more selective to just the highlights in the image now to go and create the shadows mask or the darks mask uh, it's very simple we start with the lights selection and invert it because the opposite of highlights are shadows so we're just going to save that and there's our first level of darks mask and then to go darker and darker or more selective to just the darkest shadows we're going to do the same thing we'll just intersect the mask save it and now we have our second level of darks mask and we can keep doing this and you'll see with the darkest band here in the shadows that this is getting much more selective to just these darkest areas down here. So we can just keep going on these as far as we wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it here and I'll show you an automated way in a second. But before we do that, I wanna show we create the midtones. And midtones are essentially everything that isn't light or dark. So we're gonna select everything by hitting Command or Control A to select everything at 100%. And then we need to subtract out our lights and darks to get to the midtones. So to do that, we hit Option, Command, on lights one and on darks one. So we've taken out the lightest and darkest areas. You'll see this warning here saying that nothing is selected more than 50%, just ignore that. You don't see marching ants because nothing is over 50%, but the selection is still in place and we'll see it in a second here when we save our first midtones mask. And if we wanna create the next level midtone beyond that, we'll simply select everything again, subtract out the second layer of lights and darks and save that as our midtones too. So you can see we've quickly started to build out a range of masks here selective to the light, the dark, and the midtone areas of our image. Now you notice with the midtones they're starting to get a little bit brighter and that's because as we go down the midtones here we're selecting out just the darkest and the brightest areas. So as we select out more specific highlights and shadows what's left is a little more strongly selected so the midtones are a little bit different that way so that is how you would go about creating these masks manually but as you can see it's pretty cumbersome not the way we want to work so 
I've created a set of automated actions for you on my website. If you go to gregbensphotography.com slash luminosity dash masking dash tutorial, download the free actions. And you'll see here in Photoshop when I look at my actions, I do not have this loaded. The installation is very simple. Open up the zip file, double click the actions, and it's it installed. So that's all we have to do. And there are just simply two options here. One is to create the masks, and we run this. It's going to create all the masks and more that we just talked about. And so let that finish. There we go. So now we have lights running all the way through a lights five, very selective to the highlights. The darks going out to a darks five, very selective to the shadows. The midtones correspondingly going out through that full range. And then a couple of things we didn't talk about here are some offset midtones. So sometimes you want to select middle values, but bias towards the lighter areas or perhaps biased towards the darker areas here. And these are essentially um, just adding and subtracting the different um, layers above here. So for example, this lights midtone is simply the lights one minus lights three minus lights four minus darks two. Uh, and that's how you get there. So you don't really need to understand that. You just simply need to know that you have these options and you can select the ones which seem to pick out the tones you want the most. And then when we're done with these, you don't want to save all these channels. Uh, they do add a lot of space to your file. You can see my original image was 200 meg and now it's 2.3 gig. So we don't want to be saving all that. We'll simply run this delete action and that's going to clean things up nicely for us. Takes out a gigabyte of file space in this image. Um, so that's definitely a best practice before you save things. It's very easy to go back and recreate these if you need to work with them again in the future. So I'm just going to finish here by showing you quickly how you'd go about applying these. So let's say that we wanted to select the, uh, let's go for the lights four here, right? So we're selecting these overblown highlights up above here and we'll simply command click to load that as a selection which we can see by the marching ants and now I want to use curves I'm going to do a curves adjustment with the lights for as a mask and by having an active selection and picking a curve we can see that I have a new curve with that mask applied you'll notice that uh, it's red and that's because I have my channels include an extra selection for the lights here if you simply just click on your curves layer Photoshop will automatically take you back to just the channels you need here and a couple things here in the curves dialog you'll see the histogram here actually only shows the highlight tones which means that it's showing you what's coming through this mask and if we alt click on the mask we can see the mask itself and confirm that yep it is those brightest areas but we know that from simply looking at the histogram here that is helpful because if you want to make a quick adjustment we know that the Right around here is about the end of our mask, so if I simply take this down here, I'm very quickly applying an adjustment to these highlight areas, and if we turn that on and off, we can see that it has helped us bring back in that hot metal there, made it look much nicer, takes some of the distraction from the top of the image, and helps us start refocusing back towards the center of the image. So in the next video tutorial, I'll finish editing this image and show you how we go about using all these masks we've created. but that gives you a quick and easy example of how to create your own luminosity masks using uh, the actions that I've set out and there certainly are many options out there but I definitely recommend using some kind of actions to speed up your workflow.